Hi there, it's time for my February book reviews. So if um, you're coming from my other channel, you already know that I'm having some technical difficulties. And if you're not, I am having some technical difficulties. I apologize for the quality of this video. I am recording from my phone because my laptop is having some difficulty connecting with the camera on that device. So I am rolling with the punches and doing the best I can. I hope to resolve it for the next video that I do. Here's what I read in the month of February. The first book I read was Bodies in the Boatyard. And this is me continuing the Molly McGree Coley Sailing Mystery Series. I'm reading this series completely out of order. Um, this is the second book in the series, but like the fourth book in the series that I've read. <laughs> so let me go ahead and get started. I gave it a four stars on um, like Goodreads, Amazon, all that kind of stuff. But this is the actual review. Actual rating 4.25. This was a fun follow-up to an overall fun series, which I am completely reading out of order. The main reason I didn't give this book a 5 is that I guessed who the bad guy was early in the book. Still, Jacobson entertained me throughout the story leading up to the big reveal. There were more characters introduced in this installment, and sometimes I got a little lost, but since each book includes a cool rundown of all the characters, I quickly got back on track and simply enjoyed the story. The suspense level increased in this volume and there was a bit more violence, but nothing graphic and, mo and it mostly happened off screen, if that makes sense. Highly recommend it to fans of Cozy Mysteries, Humor, and this series. So yeah, it was just a, a really fun read and um, that review is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> So the next book that I read in February was another book in this series. It's actually the fourth book in the series, and I think <laughs> the fifth book that I read, like I said, it doesn't make any sense. So this one I gave a, a rating of five stars. So here's the actual review. This is my favorite of the series so far, and the whole series has been a fun ride. I'm glad to know that more installments, at least one, is on the way. I barely figured out who did it before the big reveal and wasn't sure I was right until that moment. Nicely done on Jacobson's part. Yeah, I really like it when the mystery is a mystery. <laughs> um, what really made me love this installment? One, Molly gets to show off her sailing skills and finally embraces a marina life. I'm happy to know that she's content in her life. So not giving any spoilers away here, but I think even in the um, um, <laughs> blurb or the description of the book, it explains that she's sailing in a regatta. And there's more to it than that, but you just feel like in this installment that she's really starting to embrace this whole I'm a boat owner thing. Two, Molly finally gets some respect for her role as an investigator. I won't give away spoilers, but it's nice when a character like Molly receives respect from her peers. Again, not going to go into that too much, but you actually get to see her as more of an investigator in this one. Uh, three, Molly has made mistakes in the past that haven't given me much confidence in her abilities, but she's always made me laugh. In this book, even her mistakes make sense. I was right there with her. So yeah, there, there were things that she did in past books that I was like, oh, Molly's being goofy or whatever. Um, but in this one, like even when she made like mistakes, like they were things that I'm like, oh, I kind of thought the same thing too. So I think it just, the character herself is really just, um, she's still the same old Molly. She still loves chocolate and everything, but she's actually getting better at being an investigator. Four, Mrs. Moto never stops being cute, <laughs> which I misspelled Mrs. in my review. I need to fix that. <laughs> um, number five, sailing and boating rituals. So there's there was a little something that happens in the story. Again, I'm not giving away spoilers that I thought was kind of cool. And then at the end of the book, if you read all the way to the end, 
she um, breaks down a certain sailing ritual, which I thought was really cool. And then number six, some real touching moments that evoked real emotion. So yeah, this is a humorous, fun, fun book, but it did. There were a couple of times where you were just like, man, that was that was good. That was, you know, it, it brought you outside of the escapism to be like, oh, that could be real, you know. Um, disclaimer, I received a digital arc of this book for an honest review. Um, another really fun read, highly recommended to fans of Coastly Mysteries, humor in this series. So those were the first two things that I read in February. Very quick, light reads. I don't remember if you saw my other video, but I do have a goal of certain types of books that I want to read each month. I want to read at least one fiction book, so that was two. I want to read at least one picture book. I want to read at least one graphic novel. I want to read at least one book by a local author in my area. I'm in Hampton Road, so your local is different from my local. <laughs> I want to read at least one book either by a black female or marginalized author or that contains a character with a black female or marginalized um, book that contains a character that's black female or, and or marginalized. And I feel like there's something else. Oh yeah, and then there's my IWSG book club book. Um, we we read one of those every two months. So on the months that I don't have a book for that, I will be reading a nonfiction book. So the next book I read covered kind of two of those categories because I read two fiction books. It is a book that's um, by a local author. And it's a book that has um, a black female character who's also half Filipino so lots of stuff going on there and the book um, is called Healing's Hannah, Healing Hannah's Heart. Um, the overall rating that I, I gave it on Goodreads and Amazon all that kind of stuff was a five but here's the actual review and there are spoilers so if you don't want to hear the spoilers go ahead and leave in one two three. Actual rating 4.5 this was an experimental read for me. I don't read a lot of books with heavy drama, but I really wanted to read this book since I met the author at a local event I attended. I also read this book as part of my Black History Month 2020 reading. Overall, the, the experience was emotional. The author's style of writing is very inviting and, and, and personal. She's clearly talented in developing complex stories with highly flawed characters and produ produces something that should indulge lovers of drama. I am not a lover of drama, but still recognized this book's ability to make me angry as a clear sign that the author and her publishing team did something right. I'm glad I've read this book. I've been recommending it to people I think will like it, but I didn't like it. I do appreciate the experience of stepping out of my comfort zone to read something so well developed and well, well written that it's okay that I didn't love it. But why this book made me angry? Number one, I didn't like any of the characters, especially the main character. With that said, I understand that in order to share a redemption tale, you must have somewhere to start. Still, by the end of this book, I only kind of liked Hannah. I'm hoping that her hypocritical and woe is me outlook on life was intentional. There were tragic and violent things happening to this character that was completely outside of her control. But her reaction to these tragedies was all her. Most of the issues I had with her throughout 90% of the book were resolved in the last 10%, but some stuff was never addressed. There was never any real acceptance on the part of Hannah for the wrong she did to her life and marriage by not telling anyone about what happened to her. Her choice to withhold the truth was just as bad as entering a marriage under a lie. Yes, she has a long running internal monologue where she said something to the effect of maybe things would have been different if I told him, but she never says that to him. I'm speaking of her husband at this point. And while they are in marriage counseling at the end, she never pursues trauma counseling. Plus, there were other things she did that just didn't sit right with me. I felt like her story only worked because she was a famous model. Had she been an average woman, 
her life wouldn't have wouldn't have bounced back so easily not that it was easy to her hope that made sense number two i really didn't like that the most likable character in the story to me was the husband who cheated on his wife i pray daily to get over my hatred of people who cheat but honestly he was the most likable character except for the fact that he chose to abandon his child to please a wife that was quite frankly impossible to please until after being tragically burned there were so many there are so many men in this world who want nothing to do with their kids and this man wanted to be part of his child's life but walked away to try to fix his broken marriage which was broken the day they said i do three all of the parents in this book made me mad jake hannah their parents just all of the parents in this book were just mm. it was unsettling the lack of remorse tim had for his actions until he realized he would get in trouble clearly this kid has been let down by every adult in his life but to do what he did and then spend time with one of his victims was was not and not really caring or feeling any need to confess until told to do so was just weird the kid might be a social path and now he'll be molded into a truly hardened criminal behind penitentiary walls so again these are some spoilers that i'm giving away about the story i'm not giving you context because if you do want to read the book i want you to figure that out for yourself so <laughs> number five last one the racial stuff in this book was pretty accurate any anger I felt towards that part was simply because it was such a good reflection of reality. It's the sad truth of the world we live in. So I know that was a lot. Just remember, these are only my feelings based on reading outside of my comfort zone. I will gladly return to my world of escapism with fantasy and science fiction in a few months. Still, I'd like to read more from this author. Highly recommend it if you love drama. Dra uh. <laughs> drama if you don't proceed with caution so that was pretty lengthy <laughs> I know but I wanted to make it clear that I wasn't bashing this book I think it'll be a great read for someone else but I wanted to explain why I didn't like it but still gave it you know a high rating it was deserving of a high rating the next book I read was March book two and um, I gave it an overall rating of a five and here's the review <laughs> this was a reread for me but I never left a review the first time around I rushed through the book trying to complete a reading challenge and decided this series deserved better than that rereading it this year allowed me to focus on the images that accompanied the words and pick up on things I missed with the rushed first read like the first book in the series, this book evokes emotion and memories. For anyone who hasn't really experienced racial hatred, this may seem like a work of fiction, but it's not. I get that schools can only teach so much in school, but I feel like that kids could be taught more about what's happening in this book instead of memorizing Dr. King's speech. I love Dr. King's speech and want it to keep being presented to U.S. youth, but if more of what's in this book was taught, I think kids would seek out and memorize that speech on their own. I'll get off my soapbox and simply say thanks to those who helped put this series out. I'll be rereading the third book also, but that may take some time. After reading this, I need a break from reliving the past but I will be back. I will not be afraid to face the truth of U.S. history. Highly recommended. And that's all I'll say about that. The last book that I read in the month of February was an anthology. It was a steampunk anthology. I ended up giving it four stars. And here's the review. Oh, it's, and it's called Gears, Ghouls, Engages, a Steampunk Anthology. Actual rating 4.25. This was a fun read and much needed escapism after a few highly dramatic reads. As much as I enjoyed this collection, something kept me from going completely gaga over it. There was one story that has stuck with me and thus an additional 0.25 
to my rating. Still, I would read this again when wanting something light and fun to pass the time. There's a companion to the collection I'll start next and hopefully that one will make me go gaga. Here are my overall thoughts. And so this is where I break down each story in the collection. The <laughs> The Mechanic's Daughter by Tracy Miss Bride. Why can't I talk right now? Anyway, I said that this story was clever and sweet. I would give it a 4.0. The Lady Defiance by Mandy Burkhead. This one was romantic. I could read more about the captain and her crew. I gave I would give this one a 4.5. An Evening on Harbor Ridge by Mark Rivet. Military drama is not really my thing, but it was very well, but it was told very well, a 3.5. Um, and again, that could actually be a higher rating for someone else who actually does like military drama. <laughs> In the cavern of sleep, in the cavern of sleepers, in the cavern of sleepers by Ali Abbas, <laughs> this story was magical, and I gave it a 4.0. Fractured Moonlight by W. T. Patterson, this story was sad but hopeful, and I gave it a 4.0. Basic Black by K. A. Fox, I loved this world. This was the favorite of the whole collection. My favorite of the whole collection. I gave it. A, I would give it a five point oh. Um, the Grand Assault by J. Wollstone Carr. Clever and suspenseful. I wanted to be able to say more about some of these stories, but I just had to kind of keep it moving. Um, I'm giving this one a three point seven five. I teetered between that and a four. The next one is the Steam Horse of Stem Park by Robert B. Reed Jr. And this one I just simply listed as whimsical and I said it was a 4.5 but just so you know it's a story about animals in the future. It was very cute. It was whimsical. Jewels from the Deep by Nils Nissi Visser. I'm not good with some of these names. I apologize. And this was a kind of stick it to the man tale if that makes it sense. I gave it a 4.0. Um, the Bronze Bomber by um, Bryant Laszlo. This one was clever and complex. Again, this one is a 3.75. I liked it, um, but it had a little bit of a military feel to me. Not really, but that's, you know, that's just me. Um, La Muerda um, by Mercury. And this one was daring and provocative. This was probably the most mature story in the series. But still, it, you know, you see what kids watch. It was fine. <laughs> For that one, I think I gave it a 4.0. <laughs> Divine by E.A. Katani? Yeah. <laughs> I, I am so bad right now. I probably need some caffeine. Regardless, I said that this was fun and suspenseful. I said I like the mythological references. This one was also a 5.0. And then disclaimer, I received a digital arc with no expectation to review. Seriously, I'm signed up for like this book club thing, not book club, but um, fan club thing. And so they were like, if you want, you know, to get the arc, you can get it. And then they're like, there's no time limit. We're not going to be asking you for a review or anything. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity for me to try out this anthology. And since you know, they weren't expecting a review, I was like, I'll review it for them and be like, whoa, I read it. That's not in my review. <laughs> and then the last line of the review is highly recommended to fans of steampunk and anthologies. So long video, but that's what I read in the month of February. I'm very excited about what I'm going to be reading in March. If you've read any of these and want to give me your take on it, or if you want to ask me some questions, go for it. That's all I have for now. Bye bye.